Okay, so I fully recognize that I am between you and beer. So we're going to make this kind of nice and quick, nice and simple, because that's kind of the way that it should be when we're actually working with operators. So um, for anyone who actually uh, was in a little bit of this afternoon's keynote, there's a whole concept of operators that were brought into play. And so to this afternoon, I'm going to spend about next, call it 10, 15 minutes, explaining why operators are actually really, really cool. And this is based on personal information, personal experience that I have in actually creating one. We'll see what some of that code looks like. We'll actually use it in the real world. So if I go back to the basics of containerized environments, container design is really about, well, how we would put together a complex system. So automotive is a pretty good example of that. We have the engineers who are designing how this whole thing is going to play out. We have the production assembly line that's going to take all of the pieces from various binary repositories, maybe uh, a, a system that is upstream, so it's a base image. We're going to run it through a variety of tests. We're going to make certain that, for example, there's no bad coding patterns, there's no API issues of one form or another that are going to be put in place. And then this application, this vehicle, it's going to be delivered into some form of repository. So in our case, a registry, a car lot for the sake of an uh, automotive scenario. And so at some point, somebody's going to take delivery of this. They're going to bring it down to their system, and then they're going to deploy it according to their rules. And eventually, we're going to have to manage and patch this thing, and we're going to have some governance regs that get put in place around it. But effectively, what we're talking about is a system, but when we actually decompose all of this into the container realm, and we bring it into a container native cloud native paradigm, we lose a little bit of that systems level viewpoint. So, if I go and take a look at, for practical purposes, any enterprise application, I'm effectively looking at something known as a monolith. I have this great system that may have been de decomposed into a few things, but now there's an initiative within the organization to go and take that and bring it into a cloud-native form. So we're going to bring in, say, pods, which is a unit of schedulability within an open shift environment. I'm going to have many pods. I'm going to scale these things horizontally as replicas, and effectively, that is a method of gaining scale. That is method of building out my system. Now, internally, we have applications within Black Duck that are built out as containers, but there's multiple containers that are part of that set. So if I want to scale something horizontally, I can apply something known as horizontal pod uh, scaling, and it's a reactionary model. I can look at, say, CPU or memory or some other metric and say, I don't have enough of these. I want to have more. Now, the problem with that model is that it makes an assumption. The assumption being that if I want more, I'm really measuring the same quanta of thing, a web request, a logon request, a query result, a new entry into a database. All of those things are roughly equivalent in size. So if I have something that's processing logons within the container, well, having more of those, that's a linear scale. It's a pretty straightforward model. And when we start to add state, because after all, enterprise applications have an awful lot of state associated with them, they're still also represented as pods. What we really need to do is look at a microservices model in terms of service level agreements. What are we wanting to guarantee under what conditions that are going to be effectively what the world is going to look like? So that's where an operator really comes into play. I want to enforce a set of relationships between the pods. So I've got pod A and all of its replicas. It implements a container image, maybe even multiple container images. Those things are related to other things in my quote unquote end tiered application that is distributed around. I want to make certain that I establish floors for my scalability. I can go and define replication controllers and replica sets and all of these kinds of things and I can scale them up. But there's nothing that says that somebody can't scale them down. And when they scale them below some floor, well, I've now violated whatever my SLA is going to be. I also want to ensure that out-of-band modification doesn't occur, that some human who has access to the UI can't go and say, I only want to have three of something that should have six. Or I want to have a hundred of something that should also only have six. That type of enforcement of what the the operational paradigm should be, that's part of the operator itself. 
we want to make certain that it's a very prescriptive scenario. So it's not just reacting to the environment, but I can go and say, I need to have this capacity for reason X. Now, I'm going to use the Black Duck for OpenShift platform as an example of how this is actually going to work out. So last year at Red Hat Summit, we introduced uh, an application integrated directly within the OpenShift environment to scan for all the container images independent of the registry, wherever they came from. And so that gives us the ability to see where events are coming from, whether they be a pod event, an image stream, bring it into an environment and automatically scan everything that's associated with this. So this effectively becomes a very complex system, one where we have not just the components which are inside of the OpenShift environment, the scan controllers, arbiters, scan engines, and so forth, but also the analytics engine. And the analytics engine is something where if I have more than one cluster, I'm going to need additional capacity associated with that reality. Inside the analytics engine, we have obviously the scans that are going to be coming in and a bunch of other activities that are going to occur. A new scan goes into a container that we call a hub scan. And its job is to persist some information to a database and build out a queue and through that queue kick off a series of jobs which are going to process those scan data elements. And the hub scan, well it's a scalable entity. A job runner, which is effectively the thing that actually runs the jobs, that's a scale entity. The bigger the cluster, the more jobs that can come in because the more pods, the more images that it's going to be able to process. I might have a centralized analytics engine for both dev, prod, and production. So that's now three separate clusters potentially. And they all need to play into each other very well. And of course, on the back end, we have our knowledge base where all of the metadata around open source risks are contained. This analytics engine in the real world actually is 13 separate container images represented in 11 pods or 11 deployments. So I now have some entities that are going to have a scale of one. In other words, I only ever want to have one instance. Some entities that are going to have a variable scale dependent upon the actual number of scans that are occurring, the hub scan. And some pods that are going to be based on the quantity of jobs that need to be performed, the job runners. The amount of memory that's going to be associated with each pod is going to also vary. And this is a function of both the quantity of activity that I want to run in, but also, well, the activity of the moment, how many scans that I have coming in. And so that effectively boils down to what should the world look like? And so, in an operator paradigm, this becomes pretty straightforward. I'm going to start out with defining a custom resource, my hub capacity, my analytics engine capacity. So it's going to have a name, and it's going to have a spec. Now in this case, I've actually hard-coded something here. I say that I want to have six job runners and two scan clients. At the bottom, that's the status. That's the representation of the real world as it stands right now. So those job runners are actually running. That's the amount of RAM that's associated with the environment. Similarly, I have two scanners, and that's the amount of RAM that's associated with them. If I wanted to scale these up, I would simply go and reapply this YAML. So an OC apply dash that YAML. That gives me a way to define an SLA that's still a human scenario. What the operator SDK allows us to do is make this more programmatic. So this is all of the code that is necessary to actually implement a new operator. So it starts out with saying that I'm going to have a hub capacity. I'm going to have what's known in this code as a reconciliation loop. The goal of the reconciliation loop is very straightforward. If the system doesn't agree with what this says, fix it. Somebody puts the wrong version. Somebody puts the wrong amount of RAM. Somebody goes and deletes some pods. Somebody goes and adds too many pods. Some system goes away. This is what this would all end up looking like. And so, well, I'm going to make this really, really simple and really, really boring. So let's see if I can do this one-handed here. I'm going to put the mic down.
So right here I have a Black Duck install installer and I just need to see what I've got here so I'm just going to do a simple ls. So I'm going to run the install for Kubernetes because I know that this is actually a raw Kubernetes environment. I'm going to answer a couple questions in here. So if the demo gods are willing, once this install completes, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to see the scan and job runner counts increase from four to nine. And so effectively what's happening is that I'm going to generate an additional capacity for this system in real time. So today when I started this environment, and now we have four and eleven, I had one cluster with four nodes another cluster with five nodes, another cluster with three nodes, and I've just added another cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, to this system, and it dynamically scaled itself up so that it has the capacity to handle all of the image activity that we anticipate to have from this new cluster. All with a centralized analytics engine, all configured at install time, all done with an operator. If I want to get really fancy, I could go in here and actually try and decrement the count, and it will automatically reconcile itself forward. That's the power of an operator. That's why the operator SDK is really cool. That's why you should be looking into them as well. Maintaining system state across container images, across pods in a distributed system is a little bit of a complex task. With an operator SDK, it becomes a whole lot simpler. I'm here to answer any questions afterwards, um, but this is, this is what operator SDKs bring to the, the system. Um, I'm happy to talk about anything related to container security as a result of this and maintaining overall system state and open source risk. Thank you.